Okay, so now we're gonna switch to a live demo. First, we're going to take a look at the uh, APE UI for the second AI sim. So this is the, the main dashboard for, this, for the second sim. And essentially what we've got here in this demo system is it's collecting events, siphoning those down to threats and then generating alerts. So what we're going to do in this demonstration is create some uh, device or user behavior that will result in an alert, trigger a notification to Genie and Mac, and uh, ultimately result in the quarantine of that endpoint. Next, we'll take a look at the Genie and Mac UI. So the information you're going to see here is going to be similar to the information we saw uh, in our last uh, in our last slide, which is information about all the devices that are actually on this test network. And they're categorized. There's information regarding what enforcement policies devices are uh, applied to at the moment. Um, and then we're gonna show our actual test device in this list. So here, of course, is all the information that Genie and NAC is collecting about these nodes. And then we have this particular device right here, 55.34 is going to be our test device presently matched on the default policy, which is a permit all policy. So this device has network access at the moment. Now we'll go over and we'll take a look at the device itself. Here's the device in question. We're gonna generate a ping to an internal node on the same network. We're also going to generate a ping north, south, out to Google. Of course, we'll verify here that this has network access, which it does. What we have here is the ability to simulate some malware traffic. So in the bookmark, I have a blacklisted site. So this is a, a blacklisted site that is included in the Secion database as an unauthorized site. When this node tries to connect to that site, what's going to happen is you'll recall Naveen talked about the different methods of ingestion from the network. So you have the Secion AI SIM is taking flows and other information from the network into its correlation engine. And when it takes that information in, it's going to siphon it through all of its uh, uh, AI correlation methods, and it's going to determine if that's an alert. So it'll take roughly a minute or so for those flows to get exported from the network over to Secion, and then maybe another minute to two for Secion to, to go through and make sure, right, that this is an alert worthy of um, applying a remediation to. When it gets done with that, it'll actually post an alert in Secion Sim, and it will then send the corresponding syslog event alert over to Genians. Genians will then perform a layer two quarantine of this device. The way that's happening behind the scenes is as this uh, device tries to access the network, Genians is going to actually respond to ARP requests and going to either redirect or block traffic, depending on the traffic, um, over to Genians. This is with no integration with the network infrastructure, meaning we haven't configured um, switches or any wireless um, equipment in, to, in order to enforce this policy. So we can see now here the ping starting to drop. So that's fully automated remediation. So now we have two ping tests that are going, one to the north-south traffic, one right on the same local segment, and that is dropped. Additionally, there's an optional captive portal message that can be configured. So here what you see is a note that can be customized, and this is to help educate and advise your end user community that there's been some type of a threat detected. So this can be customized. You can have all sorts of buttons and logos on this board, but this, this lets this end user know something has happened and they need to take an action. At the same time, instead of just blocking traffic at the firewall, which is what a next-gen firewall integration would do, we've blocked this layer two traffic. So let's go take a look and see what made this integration work inside of the various UIs. So if we go and we look at the node in question, the 55.34 node inside of Genians, we'll now see that it's no longer part of the default policy. It has Secchion threat 
quarantine policy. If we actually look at that policy, we can see how that policy is structured and see how this enforcement worked. So here it is, here is the one node, which is our node in question. Click on that, it'll take you to details of the node. But if we look at that policy and we check the structure of that policy, we can see what options we've implemented with this policy. So we can prioritize it, enable it. So the way this policy works is there's a security tag that's applied and then you can assign permissions. We've poked a couple of holes so we could do our demo, but aside from that, we're dropping all traffic. We've also enabled captive portal here. So that is why you saw the device blocked and the captive portal message displayed. The way that the integration works is there actually was a syslog event that was received from Sekion, and that event is here. And inside of this event, there's information that this IP was deemed as a threat. This event correlates to an action inside of Genius to apply a security tag, which then ties it to the permissions. Now we'll go take a look inside of Sekion's UI. We'll go into the alert section. You'll notice here there's no open alerts. That's because auto remediation is enabled. If this were an open alert, then someone in the SOC would have had to have gone in and manually remediated it and have been a bottleneck and it would have taken longer and you have to staff up to be able to handle that kind of situation. So we're gonna look at remediated alerts, remediated alerts instead. Toggle this. at the last 15 minutes. There we go. So there's our alert, and this tells you that this device was suspected to be infected with malware, just because it visited the blacklisted th uh, site that we simulated uh, user traffic for a moment ago. So this was actually what generated the syslog alert to Genians, and that's what actually resulted in the layer two quarantine of the endpoint. All right, nice job. Thanks very much, Brett. Um, we've uh, we've got some questions, um, so let's uh, let's take a look at those and uh, and uh, and see if we can clear up any uh, any mysteries here. Um, the first one is uh, someone asking what other actions Genians can take if a device on the network is identified as a threat. Okay, uh, this is Brett. I'll take that question. So if we look inside the uh, and the Genian's UI, and we look in the enforcement policy itself. In addition to what we, the default method of ARP enforcement, there's additional actions that you can take. So you can actually do SNMP switch port blocking. So you're able to actually shut down the switch port using SNMP if you would rather do that instead of ARP enforcement. Um, on top of that, you can actually do RADIUS COA. And when you actually do RADIUS COA, you can assign um, different kinds of vendor specific attributes. So you could select the VSA and you could send something back here like a VLAN or a downloadable ACL or any kind of attribute that you would like to send. Additionally, you could do an agent action if in fact you had agents deployed and then you could configure whatever kind of agent action you want. In this case, we don't have one configured. So there are different things you can do uh, when it comes to how you can quarantine the device and what action you can take when that alert is received from Sekion. All right, so we see the integra integration there in, in real time. Um, Someone is, uh, is wondering about Sekion being deployed in the cloud. Please confirm. Yeah, uh, this, I will take this question just in the vein. So yeah, Sekion can be, uh, this is a good question. And uh, let me just give a brief uh, uh, overview of our architecture. We have two components. One is called as CCE and another called as APE. CCE is a collection and control engine and APE is analytics and policy engine. The job of the CC is to collect the logs and flows, and the AP is running all the other modules. Both CC and AP can be deployed in the cloud. Um, 
you can deploy it in both Azure as well as AWS clouds. Um, <clears throat> CCE can be in the cloud to collect the logs and flows from all other cloud devices that you may have in your network. Like you can have VPC logs collected from the AWS cloud, which is the communication or the kind of a net flows between the various devices. So you can have a CC in the cloud and AP on-premise, or you can have both CC and AP in the cloud, or you can have AP in the cloud and CC on-premise. So all combinations are possible. Thanks. All right. Um, we've got uh, one more, um, someone inquiring as to how difficult it is exactly to configure Genians uh, to process alerts from Secchion. Um, can we recap again the, uh, the steps that are required there? This is Brett, I'll, I'll take that question. So uh, one of the things we talked about was how easy it is to set this up. So you don't have to configure complex API queries or really uh, in-depth integrations to make this um, behavior work the way you saw today for this integration. So um, underneath the um, configuration here, there's actually a remediator option in the Secchion APE UI. And in order to enable auto remediation, all you have to do is add your Genie NAC device. It falls under a subset of the firewall category. Um, give the IP and some other information, click save, and now you have added the uh, Genie device to uh, this solution, to this configuration. On the Genie NAC side, inside of here, you just simply set up a log filter. So in the log filter, Secchion Threat Detected, there is an action every time this particular um, type of alert is received. So inside of here, you'll see that it actually adds a security tag. So if this verbiage is received from Secchion, it will add the security tag, and the security tag is what links it to the enforcement policy that we saw earlier, and the enforcement policy Second threat quarantine is what assigns the permissions. That's it. A few minutes on each side to actually set up the integration end to end. Yeah, so very straightforward um, and uh, very nice. Thank you both Brett and Naveen. That actually completes our next gen NAC with AICM webinar for today.